now for something completely different. Uh, we're having our service over here this morning, if you've not heard, because our thermostat is acting up and it's a little chilly next door, so we thought we might be a, a little bit more comfortable this morning, at least a little bit warmer. Um, so welcome all the same. Wherever, the, wherever God's people gather, there's God also. Uh, if you will, just a few quick announcements and we will begin our service. Uh, on your bulletin, as you know, we got some things listed on the back that I want to make note of. Um, church council meeting is tomorrow evening at 6. Uh, if, if you're involved in church council in any way or just want to come in and sort of hear the conversation, uh, you're more than welcome to attend that. Friday, I'm sorry, not Friday, Tuesday. Tuesday morning will be, uh, the ladies group will be meeting. I assume that's still the same. Uh, Sadie, can we yes. verify that? That'll be, uh, ladies group will be meeting at 10 on Tuesday. I think we'll be playing games. Okay. Maybe see if we can spend a little bit of our money. Okay. So playing games and spending money, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> and then coming up, uh, not this week, or in two weeks, in two weeks, uh, the church, uh, the United Methodist Church, our district that we uh, are members of, or part of, is now going to have a district training day at First United Methodist Church in Sulphur Springs. Uh, from 9.30 to 11.30. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about leadership, opportunities, uh, how to be a, you know, maybe a, a more uh, efficient or uh, effective leader in your church, and, th and that can go for anything from Sunday school, uh, teaching to, you know, maybe you just have an interest in being a trustee or whatever. There's lots of different classes that's going to be available. Uh, it's only on a two-hour time span that morning. And, uh, and those of y'all who come, I'm going to all be there. If not, maybe we can go get some lunch afterwards or something, sort of make a, make a morning, that would be fun. Um, if you're interested, though, I have some flyers for it over there, the same things here, just to let you know what they're going to discuss, uh, what kind of workshops will be available. Uh, that's all printed out in those flyers, just like this one on the uh, little sideboard over there. Any other announcements? I'm missing anything coming up we need to make note of. Oh, yes, Jenna. Wanda was just sharing with me that um, Josie lost her cat. Oh, no. And she's just heartbroken about it. Yes. So um, she spent the last couple of days with their daughter sort of mourning. So, so lost those of them. of us who have had the <coughs> loss of them, we know what yes. that means. Which I know Miss Wanda, her, her dog passed away a New Year's Day. And she, she has a replacement now. She, she has her replacement now. An addition, a new, a new member of the family. I and, like it a lot. Huh? I like it a lot. You like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Josie had it was a big old gray tabby, as I recall. Uh, a real it's a good sized cat. <laughs> real sweet cat. Yeah. India. India. Uh, I went to visit Miss Josie last summer, and we just sort of uh, visited there in her living room and. The cat took a shine to me. <laughs> and, uh, 
We have cats too. I don't know. Some people just sort of cats seem to be drawn to them. I think I'm one of those people that. Uh, anyway, sweet cat. I'm sorry to hear that. And thank you. We'll keep her in mind. We got a birthday this week also. Uh, Linda. Having a birthday? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! How about uh, prayer concerns or uh, updates, joys, anything we want to share? Anything we want to share some news on? <coughs> Sounded very open to that, and I know it's going to be a hard. It's going to be a hard year for, her. and it doesn't. It never really ends, to be honest with you. But, uh, but I'm glad she's open to that because that shows maybe you know, accepting help is a big step to me. So hopefully that will mean mean she'll be you know open to it to you know change or something. Absolutely, we hope. Mother's doing better. 
Mm -hmm. Got her in compression stockings for her swelling on her feet and legs. Eliminating some of the pain and the fact that she can sit up and read yeah. makes her happier. So she doesn't have to spin her feet elevated all the time. She tolerates us putting those compression socks on her so that she can go to the table and read. Okay. <laughs> just, just keep mama happy. You know how that is. Mama's not happy. Nobody's happy. Yes, Miss Peggy. Uh, my sister Patsy Simpson, uh, early onset of Alzheimer's, and that is progressing. So we need prayers for her. Also, uh, our RAC friend Jack Merriweather, he is in a, a nursing home for rehab right now, and we need prayers for him, please. Jack Merriweather. And what was your sister's first name? Jack. My sister. Your sister. Taxi. T-I-N-C-Y. <laughs> what did I not know that? <laughs> Duly noted. Anything else we'd like to share, my friends, before we begin our worship? Okay. Well, Today we are, is... We are, um, we are going to have a uh, Saturday night shindig here. Saturday night shindig. What night? Okay. 21st? No. The 18th. This coming Saturday night. Uh, among the performers will be James Moore and uh, uh, Roger Berry, the Cater Hill guitar wizard, uh, Doc Davis, Chris Christopherson, no, Chris Martinson, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the one that everybody comes to see the original tennis chopper troubadour, George Jordan. That'll be 6.30 Saturday night. 6.30, January 18th. Kathy, <coughs> glad that we all weathered the storm well. I'm glad you said that, Arlene. Uh, we did have some pretty pretty rough weather this week, and I know Winsboro, you know, y'all got hit really hard, especially in Winsboro area, you know, just over a year ago or so. Um, about a year ago, I guess. Anyway. Did everyone make it okay? Did anyone lose anything? Uh, any damage from wind or rain or lightning or anything else? I think the brunt of it seemed to be sort of north of us and a bit west, but all the same. You never know. So. I'm glad we, we did all right here. We got four inches of rain when we needed that. Yeah. <laughs> we, got. we did get a lot of rain, didn't we? Three. We got a lot of rain. <laughs> uh, today is marked in the church year as Baptism of the Lord Sunday. And so a little bit of our readings today are going to focus on that. Um, if you will join me in our opening prayer, I would love it if y'all would pray that with me as we've been inviting the Holy Spirit to be here with us and sort of invoking the Spirit of God. And then we're going to do something we, we probably should do more often, but we don't. We're going to have a, a moment of confession. Just I'm going to have a call of confession, and then you'll see below that if you'll just join me in the confession itself. You know, part of part of what it is being people, God's people, is giving up those things that hold us back from God to God forgive. And then we'll continue with pretty much a, a pretty standard service beyond that. But if you will join me in our opening prayer, please. Creator God. Our souls delight. Your voice thunders over the waters, liberating the future from the past. In the Spirit's power and the waters of rebirth, Jesus was declared your blessed and beloved Son. May we recall our baptism and be disciples of the Anointed One. Amen. Our first song is number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
friends, if you'll join me in our uh, call, to, in our, uh, I'll do the call to confession, if you'll just join me in our confession. How often we forget or neglect our covenant and our baptismal vows. Teach us to live like those who have accepted the obligation, the responsibilities of baptized believers. Covenant God, you made us your people and gave your Son at your pleasure your love. It was by his blood that we were baptized into relationship with you. Yet we make trivial word both of blood and water, which symbolizes our entry into the church. Forgive us our sins. Restore us to harmony with you. We pray. Truly, God shows no partiality, but in every nation, Anyone who will give God reference and do no harm is acceptable. Thanks be to God. Let's go to hymn number 384. Love divine on love's excelling. 384. Um, let's do three again. First, second, last. This morning comes to us from the book of Mark, I mean from the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, the third chapter, verses 13 through 17, in which we see and hear of the baptism of Jesus. And then Jesus came from Galilee. Sorry, you may stand as you're able. Reading of the gospel. And then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. For the Word of God in Scripture, for the Word of God among us, and for the Word of God within us, thanks be to God.
feel like I'm going to be the yelling preacher this morning. But. <laughs> That's good. Do some foot stomping up here, too. i got to throw some of those in, right? Two of them. Two of them. Let's see if we can get two of them. All right. Let it be so now. In the book of Matthew, these are the very first words that we hear Jesus speak. Let it be so now. In response to his baptism and the reception of the Holy Spirit. And first thing I gotta wonder is, did Jesus really need to be baptized? Even John said it, will you come to me? Let it be so now. I think part of the reason Jesus does this is to set an example for us as well, as he did in so much of his life. And he used his mother tongue in response to that baptism. Let it be so now. And when I say his mother tongue, I'm speaking of his mother Mary. Think back to the other gospel, the gospel of Luke, in which Gabriel has come and told her that she would give great things to the world through her. That she would be the mother of the Messiah. Does anybody remember her response? Let it be with me according to your word. In the book of Luke. Let it be with me. Expressing an openness, a readiness, a willingness, a desire to fulfill the will of God in whatever way God has called that person to do. In the case of Mary, to be the birthing place, the birthing, the birther, so to speak. Not a good word, I'm sure. Um, but the what, who would give birth to this new Messiah? And then with Jesus, let it be so now for his own willingness to do all things to bring about God's righteousness and God's justice. A fitting phrase, I think, for anyone who desires to live a life of faith. If you could sum up what faith calls us to do in one word, do y'all have any any go-to words that, that, that mean your faith life to you? Or what the faith life should mean? What's that? Obedience. Okay, obedience, obeying. I can Love. see that. Love, absolutely. Make disciples. What? Make disciples. One word, one word. <laughs> Disciple making. <laughs> Sir, Stanley Jones, theologian, said, for him... It was the simple word, surrender. Surrender. And I don't think he was meaning in the terms of I quit, calling it quits, I'm giving up, I, I'm, I'm not going any farther. But surrendering to the will and the call of God in your life. To do those things that you may have never done before. To be that person that you may not have been before. To possibly go those places you would have never gone before if you had not first surrendered to that call of God in your own life. Not a word of capitulation, but perhaps a word of rally. That I can be open to doing and being and going that which God wants me to do and to be. And to go to those places where God needs me to go. To carry that good news, that word of grace, that, that bit of love in some way so that that good news is shared. <clears throat> there is one difference though between what Mary said and what Jesus said, one little word. Does anyone pick it out? Mary said, let it be with me. Jesus says, let it be so with me now. Now. Because now is when we are alive. Now is when we are 
present with God. Now, believe it or not, I, I know y'all are still like learning things about me, and 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 you know that's part of a relationship. <laughs> Good marriage advice, the day you think you know it about somebody, that, that relationship is over. So hopefully our relationship is not quite over yet, all right? But from about 2006 to about 2012, I worked as a hospice chaplain, visiting those who were terminally ill to offer peace and comfort of a spiritual nature. And it was somewhat clinical in a way, almost like, uh, like what a nurse or a doctor would do but of a spiritual sort. So when I would visit somebody for the very first time, I actually had a, a bunch of forms to fill out. Similar to what you would do when you went to visit a doctor. They would ask, you know, your, your, your medical history, your signs and symptoms, and make a prognosis for what would be the best remedy to make you better. Only thing is, my questions would be more of like, you know, what is your spirituality like? Uh, what do you believe in? How active are you in your community of faith, in your church? Uh, whatever it is that person calls upon is their higher power. What's troubling your soul? What are your signs and symptoms? What's aching your heart? What's breaking uh, your conscience? What is those things you're holding on to that you're struggling with what will help you and then we would together come up with some sort of a prognosis for that diagnosis of whatever spiritual ailment that person may be feeling or spiritual comfort that they needed and come up with a regimen it might be prayer or meditation or having some Bible study together each week or, or reconnecting with family members and trying to bring about that forgiveness or reconciliation that might be needed. So when that person left this world for the next, they could do so with a sense of peace. What I saw so often, because it was an interesting thing, when you ask those sorts of questions, friends, you start to see some recurring themes. One that I saw a lot of is people who claim or, or stated, yes, I am a Christian, and, and they even go so far as to give you the particular flavor that they belong to. But they may have not stepped foot in a church in 25 years. Or they may say, yes, I'm a saved believer. And I'll ask them to tell me more about that. Well, I went to church camp when I was 12 and I got baptized by the preacher and, and it's all been good since. Well, tell me about your ongoing faith life. It doesn't really matter. I did that then. The point I'm trying to get to is we have this problem, I think, sometimes of looking back on our past strictly to define our now. Now, I did that for six years. Believe it or not, I was considered kind of decent at it. They even gave me a little trophy one year that said Chaplain of the Year, Michael Moore. Woo! <laughs> I tried to find it this morning to, to show you just to prove how fitted here. I couldn't find it because we don't really put trophies up on our shelves at our house. It's in some back corner in a box somewhere, I'm sure. But I think sometimes we look at our past accomplishments. I attended a Bible study three years ago. I led a church committee. When I first started going here, I was real fired up. I did a stop a Bible study once. I did the walk to Emmaus. But it might have been three months ago, it might have been three years ago. I've been 30 years ago. But we treat those as like these little trophies sometimes that we, we put on a shelf as our accomplishments and our accolades of a spiritual nature. And I think that'll do it. The God I know and believe in 
is not nearly as concerned about our past as he is right now in our present. And the God of our future may be setting up a rendezvous, a meeting point, a place where we're going to cross paths and have something happen that's going to change us and direct us in a new way. And that's great. But the God of right now is the God that we worship. The God of the present is the one we need to be focusing on. Because we can't always rely on our past to define our present. When I ask people about those past experiences with faith life, and I understand sometimes, you know, especially when you're ill, like so many of those people I visited were, you may not be able to be as involved or as active as maybe you once were in your youth. That's understandable. And it's not that that's going to you know, somehow doom us or damn us in any way. What I'm talking about is when we look back and that's all we can rely on as some definition of our faith life. I'll use another example. Maybe this will make it a little clearer. Uh, family and I, we, we've been working on a house. We've been sort of building our own house as we could afford to. We're, we're almost to those final stages. We finally got it done enough that Kim started hanging up pictures this last week. <laughs> we got pictures on the walls. And a couple of the pictures she hung up were pictures that, that I created. I have always liked to consider myself an artist. And I, and I teach art. And that's sort of like one of my go-to things. I love it. One picture she hung up was a still life of, of a horse's skull and some driftwood and uh, I think a ball or something like that. A little still life drawing that I did many years ago. 25-ish years ago. And it still holds up. I'm still proud of the work. It still looks pretty decent. Uh, it's out of pastel, so uh, those of y'all who do artwork, you know pastel is kind of a tricky medium. It's it's chalk and it's soft and it smudges in a heartbeat and if you make a mistake, uh, it's hard to fix it. But she hung that one up because she likes that one a lot. And then another is a drawing I did of one of my daughters about six years ago. And I like it a lot too. But you know how much artwork she's hung up from anything I've done in the last five years? Zero. You know how much artwork I've done in the last five years? Zero. And so when someone says, man, Mr. Moore, you're a good artist, I have a hard time accepting that phrase because the truth is, I'm not active. I'm not doing stuff. I'm not in that process of being active and creating like I would want to be if I followed my heart's desires. You see where I'm going with this? The same goes for our faith line. If all we're doing is looking back on what we did 25 years ago or 5 years ago, for the last X amount of time, our life has been sort of on standby. We put everything away and think, oh, boy, I used to be really good at that. It doesn't mean I still am. So it goes with our faith. To hold on to God to live that life in whatever ways God calls us to do. To live in the now, that one simple word now, is a gracious and a challenging word for us. And I think it nudges us to not only be part of what God is, but to also look into God's life as something to be part of at this moment. To accept that gift of call, to accept that gift of claim that God has on us, to allow ourselves to be filled with grace as we may have never been before. Are there things in your life that you may want to do differently in that perspective? And that doesn't necessarily mean taking your whole life, turning it upside down and doing something you've never done before differently or doing something different. But to maybe in your current roles, whatever they may be, 
and your current responsibilities, whatever they may be, and your current relationships with whomever they may be with, is there something we can do differently in which God's love, in which God's grace can be lived out in our actions and in our words and in our deeds. We see example after example of Jesus Christ extending forgiveness to those who need it most. We see again and again Jesus Christ reconciling people, helping them find peace, even to those who did not feel that they deserved it, or that maybe the people around them didn't feel they deserved it. Or the people in our life that we need to extend a little forgiveness to, or a little reconciliation to, to make peace with, to extend a hand of grace to, to share a good word with. Is there a way in which we can share our faith in a new way that we haven't done before, or maybe not done in a long time. To be bolder in our own proclamation of that good news. So there are ways in which we can be instruments of God's love and God's renewal. Sometimes that may be as simple as taking a left turn where we want to take a right. You know what I mean? Like, maybe we have a routine we go throughout our everyday life. And maybe doing just one little thing differently can bring us into touch with someone who needs God's grace. Sometimes it may be one of the hardest and most courageous things of all. Sometimes it means saying, I need some help. Because God knows that's a hard thing to do sometimes, isn't it? When we're going through our own struggles, our own pains, our own hardships, when we're dealing with grief, because we know what is happening in our lives, or we know what's going to happen, or we think we know what's going to happen. And it can build up, and it can weigh on us, we can break our hearts. And I don't think I need to give you all examples of that. You all have enough life under your belts. And we've probably all been there in some way in which we were hurting. But the hardest thing in the world was to let anybody else know. Sometimes the biggest step you can take is reaching out to someone else. He said, can I talk to you? I'm really going through something right now. Can we have a conversation? Because I'm feeling some, I'm feeling some pain towards you. And we need to make peace. And then being the person that's reached out to you, Sometimes the hardest thing for us to do is to listen, isn't it? It's to listen with humility and, and maybe putting our judgment on hold and just simply being there for that person. Offering our focus, offering our love, offering our hand to hold when we need it, when they need it. Because we're not always inclined to say, I need help. Let it be so now. Let it be so now with us. In our faith life, be like the artist I wish I were. One who taps into their creativity and their gifts and allows them to flow. 
Be like Mary. Give birth to a new possibility. So probably none of us are planning on going home today and having a kid. But what are some possibilities we can have birthing within us that will make things different, make things better? Is there something stirring within your heart? Is there something stirring within your soul, your mind, your imagination that if you just had a little trust in that call of God in your life and said, let it be so now, something may happen. It didn't happen yesterday or last year because it's new, it's present. As we live our lives as people of faith, my friends, may it be with a heart and a mind and a spirit that is as open to God as Jesus Christ was open to God that day in the Jordan in which the Holy Spirit visited him. And when the Spirit visited him, we don't put it on the back burner. We don't put it on a shelf like a dusty trophy. But we respond, let it be so now. Can you say that with me? Let it, let it be, be so, so now. Amen. <coughs> if you will join me to, in prayer, we're going to pray for the, some of the people that we have mentioned, not all the people we've mentioned on our prayer list. <coughs> I'm not picking and choosing. And, and I'll leave some moment there. If you would like to just have some silence for your own thoughts, your own meditations, I'll leave that there just for you. And you lift those up to God, knowing that God can hear you. Gracious God, in your goodness, you gave life to this world. And you gave life to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in his baptism, he shows us his willingness and his openness and his readiness to respond to you and your call. Lord, we thank you for that, for it is through that that we have received that love and forgiveness that we may have never known otherwise. And Lord, for that example of faith, that marker of how we can be, Lord, I just give you thanks. And ask, Lord, that in wherever we're at in our life, <coughs> that you have something for us to do that you'll reveal that to us, that you'll whisper that to us, that you'll shout it at us when we need to hear it, and that our response will be with a resounding, yes, Lord, send me. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you, Lord, for your gathered saints. And ask, Lord, that you'll bless us as a congregation, as a community of faith, that in the lives that we live, we are examples of what a church can be and should be. That our hospitality and our love will know no bounds. And grace will overflow in the world around us. I thank you, Lord, for those on our prayer list whose needs are greater than our own. And whom we lift up to you knowing, Lord, that you can bring good things. We thank you, Lord, for a new year. We thank you, Lord, for good news. We thank you, Lord, for, for grandsons such as Brandon, which, who make us proud through their academia and their competitiveness to, to show that they're making the most of the minds that you bless them with. Lord, we thank you for family who, whom we care so much about and whose suffering touches our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for friends whose needs are overwhelming, and yet we lift them up to you, Lord, knowing that you can bring miracles and healing where they're needed most. Especially, Lord, this morning we lift up Penny and ask, Lord, that you will just <clears throat> give her recovery to her health, ongoing good health, so that she can receive that surgery later in the year that she needs so badly. 
Lord, we thank you for Jonathan, for who he is to his friends, his family, his co-workers, for the good man that you've created in him who cares. And Lord, we just lift him up that his spirit stays strong despite the setbacks and that his body will continue to grow stronger or grow stronger in ways it may have not done for some time. But to increase those white blood cell counts that he needs to be raised, that he can go into chemo and it'll be part of the answer to how his body is mended. And he has ongoing life with us to do more of those things that you have called him to do for others. Lord, thank you for Matthew. Ask, Lord, that, that the fall he had yesterday not be another setback. Ask, Lord, that you will just continue to heal his body, to bring new mobility to his hands, to be there with his family, such as Stacy and Thurber, to hold their spirits high, to keep them going strong, to give them rest when they need it most as well. Lord, we thank you for Tansy and ask that you will just give her clarity in her mind and ease from the symptoms of, of Alzheimer's, that you will help her to always remember the people in her life who love her most. Lord, we thank you for Jack and just ask that you'll bring recovery to him as well. Lord, for those who are mourning, especially for, for Wanda and Josie who recently lost their beloved pets, life companions. We just ask, Lord, that you would just mend their hearts, bring them healing as well from that, from that grief and, and sadness that can come with that, that missing fur friend. Lord, for all those in our prayer list who we may have not listed up in name, but who we lift up in our hearts, Lord, just hear us as we speak their minds, speak their, their needs, their concerns, their names to you. Lord, all this we pray in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who so taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In our offering, we offer ourselves back to God in tangible ways that go towards the benefit of His church, of His ministry, uh, and our own community. If you'd like to designate your offering, your tithe, to our youth, we have our Pie place we call the noisy offering because it makes a nice clattering sound when we rattle it. And uh, if you would like to designate your offering to to those young folks, like what you see right up here, Cassie and Kennedy and Ryan, uh, you may do so. Good on me. Huh? I'm young too. Yes. And then the youngest up here among us, young at home, right? Uh, Miss Jennifer will be taking up our regular church offering with her daughter Ryan. And if you would like to designate your offering uh, towards the general ministers of the church. Uh, you have an option, you have a choice in how you do that, which I think is a, a kind of a cool thing that we do here. Uh, let us pray. Gracious God, as we give ourselves back to you, may it be a token of our love for you, as you have given yourself up for us, uh, and offered so much for us as well. Uh, Lord, the blessings we receive, we give you thanks for. And as we would just turn back some of those towards you, may those be a blessing to the world around us. To your name that we lift them up and pray. Amen. <laughs>
friends, our final song comes uh, from hymn number 394, Something Beautiful. Yeah, Something Beautiful. And it also comes with an invitation. If you have something that you would like to share, uh, maybe your own thoughts in response to what we've done today, what I've said, or to any, something you felt, uh, that may be sharing a testimony. It may be responding with joining the church. It, it may be renewing your baptismal vows. It may be just simply coming forward and receiving a prayer or a blessing. You're invited to do so as we sing our last song, uh, Something Beautiful, and then we will share the peace and go back out into that cold world. <laughs> <laughs> I do want you to take a moment to share the peace of the Lord with someone near you, someone across the room from you, someone you may have not talked to in a while. And as we go forward, may it be to go forth to answering God's call in our lives, to indeed being something beautiful, to being something good that God wants us to do. Go forth in His name, go forth in His blessing.